The Mandela Effect, as we know, is nothing more than a large group of people misremembering something, like a detail in a film or logo or something like that. For example, many people thought that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s, when in fact he went on to live until the year 2013. Hence why the phenomenon was go. named after him, because it was sort of the first documented experience of it. And since then, the internet has done what it does best, and given us a wave of experts on the Mandela Effect and the incidents that happen because of it. Not least a Mr. Brian Staveley, who today thinks that not only has the famous chef Gordon Ramsay been Mandela affected, oh, snap. but he never existed at all. <laughs> It's a Mandela effect where Gordon Ramsay didn't even exist now? What is this? There's no way. All right. Let's Hello and what? welcome along to another episode of Tim Ford Tuesday with what? me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a big thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable encrypting all that internet traffic sent to and from your devices mm. and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malwares and phishing attempts and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you want simultaneously. In today's Ooh. day and age, the internet knows a hell of a lot about us. We're on it up to six to eight hours per day, which is why you should care about your online data. Now, have you ever had an ad or banner on your device that brings to mind a feeling that someone's listening in on your conversation or reading your mind? And this is how your online data is being used against you. And you can use Surfshark to become resistant to this sort of targeted advertising. Click on the link in the description or go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use the code Simon Dan for that whopping 83% off Ooh. and three months extra free. Right, back to today's video and the brilliantly naive Brian Staveley. Now he wants to share something with us all about Gordon Ramsay. Here we go. Welcome back. Keep in mind, this is your dose of reality. Dose of reality. This is the no. next video in my Mandela Effect shortlist. It's not a brand new change for me. It's at least several months old, maybe a year old or so. For me, maybe for other people, it's a lot older. But it's an easy video for me to make as it is. Just so much residue everywhere. Uh, it is a name change. Residue? Tell by the title. is to do with the famous chef Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay, as I'll show you right here, no longer exists. Oh, that was straight to the point, wasn't it? I hope you've got some pretty serious evidence to justify that, Brian. Gordon Ramsay. Oops. Is there any evidence at all? Or did he end up having to do this because uh, this guy copyrighted his video, and so this is all that exists for this entire thing now, so that you can't actually see what he's showing anyone? Because if that's what this guy did... It shows how weak his entire argument and basis is. I need to switch my screen. Oh, there Gordon you Ramsay. go. There we go. Technical errors. You know, no big deal. It's now Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay with an A-Y instead of an E-Y. It, it was always an A-Y? You just, you just didn't know how to spell his name? Hey, genius, you still say Ramsey, and it's always been spelt like that. If this is your evidence to suggest that he no longer exists, then I am shocked and... Who am I kidding? I knew this was going to be a bad showing from Brian. He was Gordon Ramsay. Now he's Gordon Ramsay. No, he wasn't. He's always been Gordon Ramsay, as you say. So I'm going to get into some residue to show you real quick. Yeah, he's going to show us some residue. Like, at least... The other Mandela effect theories are like, it would be something like uh, Gordon Ramsay used to have brown hair and like brown eyes instead of 
blonde hair and blue eyes, right? Like, it, it'd be something like that. It wouldn't be that he doesn't exist at all because you spelt his name S-E-Y. Uh, it's... Did he really just not put any thought into how this whole theory has worked the entire time? Or is it just like little brain babies? Some leftover residual evidence that shows that we're not crazy. And anybody that says there's nothing going on with the Mandela effect and it's just a psyop, wow, they haven't even done a lick of research into it. Say that no changes affect you is mind-boggling. No changes affect me yeah, because there are not any changes. The Mandela effect is nothing more than people misremembering facts about things. Maybe this one doesn't, but I do think that... For a lot of it, yes. For a whole lot of it. That does seem to be what a lot of it is. People think that memory is infallible, and it's not. You're, like Our memories are heavily flawed. Most people will be affected by this one. Most people remember Gordon Ramsay. Now Gordon Ramsay. Let's see some of the other people that remember. We have Express.co in the UK. Well, they clearly remember Gordon Ramsay with an EY. Gordon Ramsay with an EY. Yeah, they spelt it wrong. Now granted, as a publication, they shouldn't have, but they have. Let's move on over to the Taiyi.ca, Hell's Kitchen article talking about Chef Gordon Ramsay with an E-Y, okay, E-Y. Spelt it wrong. Let's move on over. Gordon Ramsay with an E-Y. So all these uh, sites, Metro in the UK, all... These are all publications, and they should have all been, you know, edited, like an editor checking their shit. But at the same time... Why are you using articles instead of Hell's Kitchen? Just run the credits. Why don't you just pull it up from the credits? Oh, is it because they spelt it A-Y? Is that it? Because of the fact that the production made sure they had their shit right, but modern just reporting and news reporting is, is done like this. It's done so fast that it gets past editors and it gets put out and it has simple things like this that are just misspelled all the time. Especially with names. Because names get auto-corrected into random shit all the time now. Due to various different programs and the way that they function. All these huge sites, they must be fallen. What's the difference between a service animal and an emotional support pet? Well, a service animal... For my psyop. Because there's nothing going on, according to a lot of people in the uh, so-called truth community. Nothing going on. Meanwhile, I'm over here showing you thousands of changes. Huge historical events, all sorts of stuff. Yes, this sure. is just a name change. Still big, especially if you remember Gordon Ramsay. You're not crazy, and your memory doesn't suck. And it's not an online psyop. Your memory does suck. Like, the human memory is very fallible. You can convince your memory that things took place that never took place in your life because you just keep repeating the same lie over and over and over again that you just it, it's now a memory that you've developed that's completely fictitious that's how good your memory is okay so he's wrong about that plain and simple second of all how like just compare it to the credits on the shows that are being discussed Instead of reports done about the show, why don't you go to the actual source material? Oh, almost. Now, it's not an online psyop. I agree there. And you're not crazy either, and your memory doesn't suck. Your memory is just not perfect. Exactly. Like, not perfect memory. Like, your memory is very flawed. It's very easy to fool. And you'll misremember stuff all the time because you your memory is all over your brain. So you're getting cross signals all the time. Like, your memory is very fallible. Some people have, like, a photographic memory, right? Very helpful for them for specific types of things. 
However, very rare. Gordon Ramsay with an EY, BlastingNews.com. How about the Miami Herald? Oh, they want me to subscribe. Okay, well, we're not going to do that. All right, Daily Edge, Go. Gordon Ramsay in the URL with the EY. They literally all going to be articles. So you can just cherry pick articles for as long as Gordon Ramsay has been relevant to today that they have misspelled his name. Because I know for a fact my phone autocorrects Ramsey to S-E-Y. That program does that all the time and I have to go back and correct it and edit posts on like Facebook and shit all the time because I see it, I realize what happened and then I go through and fix it after it's already been done and up for who knows how long. Sometimes it's like I see a a comment or a like from somebody on something that's like a month old and I'm like, what the hell was this? And I go look and then I notice a some like an autocorrect or a typo that I didn't notice before. A lot of the time I just don't proofread it at all. So that there's just a bunch of them and then I just edit it later. But it's this is common for me when I post anything about Gordon Ramsay. Specifically from my phone, but the fact is is if your phone does it, it's not the only program that makes that same mistake. Gordon Ramsay right here with the E Y. Never been E Y in this reality. Hmm, interesting. Everybody's falling for my side off. I don't understand how reams of examples of how people have spelt his name wrong means that his name has changed. And that in turn means we've shifted universes because that's what you think, isn't it, Brian? That we've shifted universes because of this change. Today.com. Gordon Ramsay with an EY. Another oh, article. Amazing. Articles, articles, articles. I love articles. when people, you know, supposedly misremember and misspell as the debunkers and deniers try to say. I love how it's always the same way. But what else would. Like, go use his Twitter. If he's updated and changed the information in his Twitter, you can go back into, like, the, the Twitter file shit that people pull up all the time, pulling up old tweets and everything. You can go back, and you will see if he ever changed his name from the way he put it into the machine. But because of the fact that you're going to demand that this is a Mandela effect, you're just going to say that, of course, it's always been that way because that's how it is in this reality. Now, I think there are some compelling arguments to be made that this could could have taken place and that some people have been affected, but many others have not. This is simply a terrible argument for it. This is a, a conspiracy theory I find interesting and entertaining and not completely implausible, in all honesty. We've got physicists who discuss the fact that there are an infinite number of parallel universes to ours that we just don't know how to interact with. So what's to stop parallel universes from merging, right? We don't know anything about it. We just have physicists that are saying that this is a real thing. We also have physicists who disagree, right? So it's a plausible theory to exist. We just, if you didn't merge, you wouldn't know. But this is a terrible example of this. Could it be? It is what it is, a misspelling. Have you got anything else other than badly spelt publications? You know, and I love how it's actually usually more than the... I really wanted to go to some that's sort that's of source material. Wild, 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 wild. All right, let's scroll down. And who do we oh. have here? Well, we got Gordon Ramsay. You know who we have with an EY. EY, EY, EY. Oh, shit. Shit. It's like when they had a link that was associated to it that went back to something that was probably like a source material of some form, like from Scolo's Restaurant or something along these lines. It was spelt the way he spells it. Just go use some sort of source material, man. Why? All right. Next. The Independent. Gordon. The Gordon. I like that he just skipped past that, too. Like, he didn't. He went down into the article, just pull up to go look at the photo. But then he also 
completely ignored that in the article it was typed out correctly. Just completely overlooks it. What in Ramsey effect? <laughs> I guess not. Well, just to be sure about Brian's methods, I thought we'd check out one more video from him. This time he's going after good old Uncle Sam. Sam? I am. Does he change he the monitor again? Or, or does else. he just go he on? Okay, he did remember. He search Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam costumes. This is what you would find. I don't find. like the way that he does it. Okay. This might look familiar to you. You see this everywhere, right? With the striped hat, with the stars. You see it everywhere. The problem is that this has never been what Uncle Sam has looked like. The Uncle Sam poster that this was modeled yeah. after, all these costumes, all the Uncle Sam. Yeah, like this is the original Uncle Sam. And then over the years, they added stripes to the hat so that it would resemble the flag. But his dumb ass doesn't understand that with just a little bit more research, he would have seen just something maybe to show very clearly how this happens and how this has been an evolution of Uncle Sam over time. Sam things has been Mandela affected. Now, it doesn't stop here. I'm sure it doesn't. But being from the UK, I don't have a huge amount of knowledge about Uncle Sam. In fact, it probably stops at that poster. However, if I had to guess, the American flag has red and white stripes, and perhaps over time, the red and white stripes were added to the hat to bring it in line with the flag. Just a hunch. Exactly. Because the thing is, Uncle Sam isn't something that it just has existed consistently over and over again it's something that the american media and the american government through use of like recruitment programs for three letter alphabet agencies as well as the military it, they've always used uncle sam and sometimes police and first responders right across the board have used images of uncle sam to help gain interest for recruitment efforts and each time somebody does this, they bring back Uncle Sam. But most people make some embellishments and changes to update the way he looks, to change it just a little bit, especially if Uncle Sam is copyrighted. I don't know if he is, but you have to imagine if there's any kind of copyright on any version of Uncle Sam, everyone who uses it is going to slightly alter him just enough that they get past the copyright so that they don't have to spend more money on creating a marketing thing for something that Americans just recognize as a generality. Don't go anywhere yet, even if you already know this change. This changed several years ago for many of us. This is one of the easiest to find. Literally, so when I go out to the beaches and all these places and these beach shops and I find all this residue, right? I like that he keeps calling it residue, like there's just dust. You find loads of Uncle Sam like this everywhere. Doesn't this look from... Notice how he stops where he does? Imagine. Tell you to you, this is what you see everywhere, right? I like how he's not highlighting the costume that does have the white hat. Exactly. You don't even understand exactly. this version. And this is what the actual yes, we have has always been. What was that, Brian? You don't even ever see this version. And this is what the actual reality has always been. You don't even ever see this version. And this is what the actual reality has always been. Everything is based yes. off the poster oh of my Uncle God. Sam, yet they all use stripes. Anyway, anytime you buy an Uncle Sam. They all use stripes. They all use stripes. It's kind of like when this came out, making stripes was more difficult because of the technology of the time yet later on we had stripes more prevalently right he doesn't have it in his bow tie he doesn't have it on his collar it's literally just his pants then you have different size stripes and they're more prevalent 
probably because of the fact that the textiles industry had changed and developed and gone through updates that allowed for this to be more simple to produce, making it more feasible for a costume, which then again, later on, once more, different stripe pattern, right? Those aren't the same as this or this. Obviously still vertical stripes, but the thickness of them has changed again. Now you also have stars on the vest underneath, which did not exist here, but he did have one here. And look, now it's not just a bow tie, but it's it's a bow tie with extra length for these long portions here, and that's no longer striped. Once again, dropping these as well to be more of a throwback to this, most likely. How do you notice these two are very different and change, and the only thing you point out is the stripes in the fucking hat? You have to be oblivious and purposely making an argument that you can clearly see the difference in, even without acknowledging this. You can still, just through the ones he's willing to acknowledge existing, out of these four costumes, which is really just two, twice in a row, from different places, he just can't put it together. It has stripes, and you've never thought, hey, this looks out of place, right? Because it's not out of place, because you remember the stripes. Because this hat used to have stripes on it. Now, I'm fairly sure it didn't. No. Here is a photo of the man who modelled as Uncle Sam in front of the original poster in 1970. And he's wearing a striped hat in the photo. So, what happened first? The striped hat started to appear, or the original poster changed? What seems more likely, I wonder? We'll leave that for all of you to decide, shall we? Right, that's it for another fascinating Tinfoil Tuesday. I wonder what Brian will make of that one. He wasn't too pleased last time we did a video on him. So, we're all done and dusted. Thank you so much for watching. The fact that he wasn't too pleased about the last video is why I had assumed that Simon Dan just placed that one thing there and that he wasn't having an issue of just like forgetting to click a button which it happens to everybody i understand the thing is i could see that being the case like you get a copyright strike and then you say okay what portions are it? oh oh it's because you don't want me using your video fine and then you just here's a fix meanwhile my audio is still going over that right so that's kind of what I had assumed would happen there, but I'm glad it's not because it's better for people to not do that kind of thing for these types of videos and to allow discourse to take place and to uh, continue forward rather than, oh, but my poor feelings, right? That's just not how it should be done, to be quite honest.